When World War II began, a generation of young men answered the call to fight for our country from all walks of life. And a new book tells the story of the 1941 University of Minnesota Golden Gopher football team, which won a national championship and finished undefeated 15 days before the attack on Pearl Harbor. And it's special because our good friend, reporter Danny Spiewak, wrote it. It's called From the Gridiron to the Battlefield. And Danny is here today on the other side of the interview for the first time. Good to have you, man. It's nice to be here, Dave. It feels kind of funny, you know, to be the one being interviewed. Yeah. But it's nice to be on the morning show here on Saturday. Good and this is you. the first time we've actually seen each other in, in right? a year. Just in, 14 months, yeah, you know, not that, that long. Big deal. You know, right? <laughs> so you wrote this book, and we were just kind of chatting before the interview. This is quite a process. When did you start this? So it really started right after I got here, you know, in the Twin Cities in 2018. Mm -hmm. And it started as just sort of an idea. It was just this, you know, you could write a book about all of these players that won a national championship. Their final game of the season was on November 22nd, and 15 days later, Pearl Harbor hits, yeah. and then they're off to war there in the next, you know, three or four years. You know, on the beaches of Normandy at Iwo Jima, and of course, I have a personal connection because my grandfather yeah. was a member of the 1941 freshman team, so he grew up in Minneapolis, and that had always been a part of our story growing up. And so, you know, I had that personal connection, and there he is, right there, Jack Spiewak. That appeared in the Minneapolis Tribune, as it was called then, in, in May 1943, wow. as he was inducted into Fort Snelling and, and went off to the Army Air Corps. But had that personal connection and just wanted to know, where did these guys end up yeah. in the war? And you, you, you think about how much stress it is playing in an undefeated season, playing college football mm -hmm. in general, and then the added stress of a lot of these players knew what lied ahead for them, I would imagine. Yeah, and what was so interesting about the book, what I found fascinating was uh, the media reports and a lot of the reporting at the time during the fall of 1941, a lot of the players had verbalized that they felt they probably would be in the military at yeah. some point after the season. They didn't know when or what that was gonna look like, but they knew it was coming, and then they're chasing a national championship on the, on the national stage. You know, they're playing, some of their games were broadcast on both NBC and CBS national radio. You know, at the time, they were, were a big deal back then. How extensive was the research project? Because it's mm -hmm. not like you can just go and go, oh, 1941, what huh. happened? You know, what, what happened? Did you get, I'm assuming your grandfather, there were some stories handed down, but I imagine there's probably a lot of research involved. Yeah, it was a lot of research. It was a lot of interviewing the players' families. Yeah. Unfortunately, I don't believe any of the players are still around. I, yeah. I couldn't find any that were still alive, but their families were really excited to talk about those stories that have been passed down. There were some documents and letters that survived. A lot of archives at the University of Minnesota, the Minnesota History Center, where you can kind of piece together, you know, um, sort of what it would have been like to be 21 years old and playing on the national stage. And, and Minnesota was the Alabama of their time. That yeah. was their that was their fifth national championship yep. uh, in in eight years. With you know, the Heisman Trophy winner. Too. With the Heisman Trophy yeah. winner, and, and that of course is a huge part of this. That Bruce Smith accepted yeah. the Heisman two days after Pearl Harbor. So, Which is incredible. Yeah, and gave a really memorable speech there on national radio. I, I, you do research all the time. You're a mm. phenomenal news reporter. Is there anything that you came across in this process that went that just kind of hit you like, wow, I had no idea I, that I would know that or that I would learn that throughout this? The biggest thing, I think, to me was the popularity of the Gophers at yeah. that time. And of course, the Gophers and University of Minnesota is such an institution in this community. Um, but but even back then, you know, the, the during the Depression and in to those pre-war years and into World War II, the Gophers were truly a dynasty and they were truly the biggest ticket in town. I mean, there were ticket scalpers that they had police that had to go through the stands <laughs> to make sure that they, they, you know, they weren't doing anything illegal, that the demand was so high to get into Memorial Stadium on a, on a weekly basis when they had home games. So why? I mean, you, you knew these stories. I'm sure you heard them growing up. Why, when at what point did you decide, you know what, this should be in a book? You know, it kind of clicked as I was looking into where everybody ended up and, and just to find out that there was a player, a backup fullback on the 41 team that was on a minesweeper at D-Day. Oh Watch that, ended up winning a Purple Heart after his ship exploded. You know, that there were other players that, that were with American forces at Iwo Jima and just the, the horrors of how young you'd have to be to, to be in that situation. And it just put this together of like, there's no comparison to this now. You know what? you know, what it would have been like to be going through that season and then having to, you know, you yeah. know, put together that type of sacrifice. Do you think it was possible that because football maybe was less, because they did have this looming ahead of them, maybe the pressure was off playing football? Because we know, hey, we have to go to war. That's not nearly, that's a much bigger deal than playing football. 
Yeah, for sure. It really put things in perspective. Yeah. And that's why Bruce Smith's speech that I know a lot of people may be familiar with, there's actually a recording of it that was dug up a couple years ago. You can hear his audio where he really talked about that. His speech as a 21-year-old on December 9th, 1941, with millions of Americans listening mm -hmm. on the radio, he talked about sort of like that that football and that, you know, everything he'd been through in college had prepared him and his teammates to to, to go on to, to fight in the war, and, and many of them did. I know you've got to be so proud of this book when it does finally come out um, in the fall. Uh, part of this process, what was your favorite part of it? Was it researching? Was it seeing the final product? What did you enjoy so much about it? I would say all of those, but the number one, I think, has been meeting the family members of the players mm -hmm. um, because it's been so interesting. They, every single one of these families has a story that's been passed down, just like my grandfather did. Yeah. Um, and so it's been really fun to just meet those families and just kind of see, you know, just, just kind of what they thought about all this. Awesome. Danny, thanks so much for chatting with us about the book. It's going to be available just in time for the 80th anniversary of Pearl, the Pearl Harbor attack uh, later this fall, later this year, and just in time for football season. It is available for pre-order. We have a link on care11.com. Thanks, Danny. Thanks, Dave.